Zoom uh, Bible class on the tabernacle. Um, I'm just going to keep rehashing the pieces of furniture as we are studying the symbolism of the tabernacle. And the symbolism is just uh, symbols that represent Christ to come. Um, tonight we are uh, working with the altar of incense. It is one of the three articles that's in the holy place. Uh, the other article was the, we talked about the golden lampstand, and then we talked about the table of showbread. The golden lampstand represents um, Jesus Christ, the light of the world, and the table of showbread represents communion, the body and the blood of Jesus, um, all of that, uh, that was in the holy place. So I don't want to rush it, uh, as pastor is just on the, the brazen laver, which he talked about Sunday. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, a lot of information that came out Sunday about the brazen laver. Um, it came from the temple where it used to be a mirror of brass. They would, they would shine it up so, mm -hmm. so you can actually see yourself and have a reflection of yourself in the brass that they brought mm -hmm. from Egypt. And that was another fun fact, was that all of the jewels, these poor people in the wilderness, uh, all the stuff they came out of Egypt made them rich. All this stuff that came out of Egypt with them, as they took, or the Bible says they borrowed mm -hmm. from Pharaoh. It wasn't really borrowing, mm -hmm. they literally yeah. took these items. So it was gold, silver, jewelry, money, mm -hmm. um, things of value. Um, that's what the children of Israel had when they left Egypt. And I'm, I'm saying that to come to a point. Uh, as pastor is on the brazen labor, which is the washing pool uh, where the priests go to. But um, the, the women of the temple would bring uh, the brass to make the furniture, to make this furniture in the temple. And, and what we didn't talk about thoroughly about that labor and we're going to get to the altar of incense, but it was so many intricate things that came out um, as he's doing it. And, and I, now I feel like I'm rushing because he's on labor and I'm on the altar of incense. But it's good that we have this knowledge prior to him preaching. Then when you can uh, actually relate. Um, but uh, when it came to that brazen labor, uh, it was actually a mirror. It was so shiny. The women would shine it so um, the, the brass in the temple that you could actually see your reflection or have an image of yourself. And so symbolically, and that's why we're dealing with these pieces of furniture, is because we want to deal with the symbolism of it and why. And remember, uh, as we taught in the hermeneutics class, that uh, Christ was uh, concealed in the Old Testament and he was revealed in the new. That is so important to know that all along that Christ was with us. So Christ was with them. Um, the, the, uh, in Genesis, the God said, let us make man. Who was he talking about? Let us make man. Who was God, to, who was he talking with? You know, it was the Holy Spirit, it was the Trinity. So mm -hmm. the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He yeah. said, let us, make man. So Jesus has always been on the scene. He just didn't come down until the New Testament. Mm -hmm. So he was revealed in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be some intricate parts about this altar of incense because it actually references when Zechariah, uh, when the angel came to him and said, your wife is going to have a baby. And they were of age. Y'all remember that? And Elizabeth was of age. He was of age. And, and, and he almost didn't believe it, if I'm not mistaken. And Luke, this references, he was in the temple at the altar mm -hmm. uh, at this time when the angel did visit him. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's important to, know, important to know that this altar of incense represents prayer. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, at this altar of incense, Zechariah was there when mm -hmm. the angel visited him, and he said, you're getting ready to have a wife, and he had to laugh or whatever mm -hmm. he did, and, mm -hmm. and it shut his mouth. Mm -hmm. that at that time, it made, it made him deaf dumb. Mm -hmm. He couldn't speak. He said, you shall 
called mm -hmm. his name John. Mm -hmm. And so at this place, and and, and he, because uh, Zachariah was a priest. Mm -hmm. Zachariah, right. and, and so you can get all this information when you study, and then you can reference, study, and then reference. You'll understand the whole Bible will come together. It will come together, and that's why it's so important to understand uh, the symbolism. That's why I want us to be more in depth mm -hmm. in our studying God. This just let's not read the scripture and take it topically. We want to take it contextually. So there's a difference. I tell my daughters all the time. Uh, when you receive a text or an email, uh, you have to understand the writer's intent. And sometimes we get a text and, and we're, we're confused about mm -hmm. the, uh, the writer's intent. And you can be like, uh, are they getting smart with me? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the author knows what his intent is. That's why we have to study uh, our Bible so that we'll know what God's intent was. Mm -hmm. uh, the tabernacle was it was a movable tent of meetings where, where, where God wanted to meet with his people. Mm -hmm. Bottom line, mm -hmm. it was nothing else. It was nothing else. God just wanted to meet with his people. The people that he freed, mm -hmm. that cried out to him where there was silence in the land. They cried out to him and they said, Lord, free us. And he freed us, and then they left. They took all of this gold and silver, jewelry. They were well-to-do millionaires, as you could say, in today's time. Mm -hmm. And so we, when, when it was time for the Lord to meet with them, he would tell, he told Moses, which is the first tabernacle that was built, he told Moses, hey, create me a tabernacle so I can meet with my people. Make me a place so I can commune with my people. But then there was laws in place. So the, look at this about God. He could have uh, abolished the law himself, but he didn't. He, he even obeyed the laws uh, of the land at that time. So things was done ceremonially. So now we have uh, the tabernacle. Um, we first talked about uh, the uh, brazen altar. I'm just refreshing you and refreshing those that are tuning in on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, I'm just going to give you a quick refreshment, and then we're going to get to our place. Uh, we won't be here long tonight. But the brazen bronze altar represents a place of slaughter. It was where uh, the, the people of the community would uh, which actually pitched tents around the tabernacle. So you really got to see this. You really have to see this. And what I'm going to do is put this piece together because just say this is the tabernacle. Around the tabernacle, the members, the, uh, the body of Christ, uh, Israel, they pitched tents around the temple where God was. So every day, I want you to try to get a visual. Every day, you know, you have families living in tents next to the temple of God, the tabernacle of God. So we got like hundreds of families pitched their tents, and this is where they were because they were in the wilderness. They didn't have the cars we have. They didn't have the church we have. And so what the only place they can go and commune with God or, or go before God the way they did ceremonially was to stay close to God. That's a, that's a cue mm -hmm. right there, Q. Mm -hmm. <laughs> stay close to God in this day and time. I will tell you that the enemy is so divisive. Mm. He is working on separating families. Mm -hmm. I mean, friends. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> cats, dogs. But symbolically, around those, the 12 tribes was around him, but he was in the center of all of it. He was in the center. So if he's not in the center of your family, he he's is. not in the center of your friends, he is. it don't he work. He is. Thank, thank you, Kelly. Yeah. Good analogy. That's why I say stay close to God. Mm. Because what the enemy is trying to do is separate at this time. He's trying to separate the people of God, mm. families of I'm telling you, it could be a small comment. It could be a, a thought that you say, or it could be a, a, a act that I, you know, if I move this paper 
And I put it here for one reason. Y'all hear me. I'm only putting it here so it won't fall. But the person looking at me saying, you just moving stuff around because you can. And, and that's why I said, this scripture is written by God. So it's, the, it's God's intent. It's, it was God's intent for us to stay close to him. That's why he said, build me a tabernacle. So here on earth, in today's time, in this 20-something century, build a tabernacle here. Mm. Build God a tabernacle here. I mean, when I say it's getting serious, it's, it's getting serious. Mm. Uh, there are useless deaths. Uh, people are sitting at home now uh, coming up with ways to shoot many. I mean, just take a rifle and shoot many people. Uh, so it, it, it is important to understand why God wants to stay close to us. And every piece of the furniture that is in here is symbolic of Christ to come and how we can so we move from the brazen altar, which meant slaughter, which means the priest had to actually accept it from one of the people outside for their family. Now remember, these are daily rituals. Somebody hear me. These are daily rituals. Repeat after me. Daily rituals. And then there was once a year that there was an atonement where they would sprinkle the sin offering blood on the horns of the altar. And so, I mean, can you can you imagine? I want you to try to go there that every day, Kenny, and, and instead of getting up going to uh, your job, but you had to get up and go to the temple on behalf of your family. You got Royce to take care of. And he is the main thing in your life right now. Between him and God, that is your main priority. And every morning you had to get up Go out there amongst all that stuff we didn't brought from Egypt, and you and see now they didn't just take uh, uh, gold and silver, and so they took cattle and beasts and mm -hmm. lambs and goats, and I mean they were ready to really reset their lives. God provided everything, mm -hmm. and so just think, Kenny, you get up every morning, you go find the best that you have that day. And you, you bring them a little she lamb. And then you have to do the work. You know, now Christ came, you ain't got to do all that. But this is symbolic of that. That every day that there was a slaughter place, just think of the smell of blood, the smell of death. Just think of it. What we have to do to get close to God. That was some of the things we had to do. Secondly, we ended up... Um, at the uh, the altar of offering, that's where you brought it. And then there was a labor where the priest washed his hands. And like I said, when we get to that labor, this is my point I wanted to get to. <coughs> is that you can actually look in the labor mm -hmm. and see a reflection of yourself. Mm -hmm. Not just through the water, but the brass itself. And so... Uh, symbolically, when the priest was able to go and watch, he could see himself. And that's the purpose of baptism. When you, when you, when you go down an uh, a old man and you come up anew, uh, the reflection, and, and also remember that brass was the judgment of so here we have a boat. Y'all, I, I promise you, I went, my, I spent my whole Saturday in, in like Hobby Lobby and all that. I was going to start making the pieces. I wanted to start making the pieces to see. So I did end up with the Ark of the Covenant that I was going to put together. But I wanted to bring a, a ball, one of the silver bowls up here to, you know, to actually do the literal washing of my hands so I could see myself in there and allow the judgment of God. That's, the, that's it right there. That's, that's, that's what we need to be humble enough to just wash our guilt and sins away and allow the judgment of God to look back at you. That although you can, you can see your reflection, but there ought to be something that, 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 that reflects what we look like to God. Oh, 
it gets deeper. Not only what I look like to him, what 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 scent goes up. Okay, so here we are. We at the brazen labor where we wash our sins. We can see our reflection, and then we enter into the holy place. Like I said, it was three articles in the holy place. It was right behind the open gate. Uh, three articles was the candle, which represents the light of the world, and the showbread, which communion. And then you had, right here is what we want to talk about tonight, is the altar of incense. The high priest burned incense on the altar every morning, and he burned it every night. The priest would burn incense every morning and every night. Uh, the altar had, it was made uh, square. Uh, it was almost like this thing here. It had four horns sticking out of it. It also had two poles with the gold ringlets to hold the sticks that you could just pick it up and carry it. Uh, I don't know why that is so important that they go into detail, but Christ is very, uh, God is very detailed about this furniture, and it is for a reason. Um, and so there was a molding crown, and there was four horns uh, on it. And so the Lord required special incense. So they would have to go and buy frankincense, uh, myrrh, uh, oils, uh, expensive oils that they brought. They didn't have to buy or or, or thing, uh that they brought in. Um, and whatever it was, it was a sweet smell. Hear me. <laughs> It was a sweet smell. And so when the, when the priest would burn this particular incense, it would go up unto God as a sweet-smelling savor. So, so when, our, when our sacrifices and all of that gets into this altar uh, and it's being burned, it should go up sweetly. Now, I, I could talk about that. A, a, a lot uh, that what we bring to God doesn't have a stench. That what we bring to God doesn't have a, a, a odor. But what goes up to God, it, it should be received from God, to God, as a sweet smell. Y'all can interject at any time. Uh, we're only going to talk about this one piece because I don't want to go too far into it, but whatever goes up to God should have a sweetness to it. And if I was to bring that into today, the scent that went up represented prayers. Everything that goes up to God, it represented the prayers for the people or wait, for the people or from the people. And so uh, the aroma that goes up to God ought to be a sweet smell, which means coming, in today's time, coming from a pure heart. Actually, coming from his word. Now, uh, we're living in a day where you have to keep looking introspectively into your own heart. Uh, I'm learning day by day we can get caught up in who we think we are. Mm. So humility is important. Mm. When you find yourself in error, y'all hear me, don't run from God. Mm. Run to him. Because the, 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 the thing that God smells the most is your humility. Mm. Which, that's the sweet smell that God Christ was humbled unto death un until his death he was humbled. Mm. And so this particular altar of incense was there for prayer, mm -hmm. intercessory prayer. And uh, 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 I'm trying to get myself, I'm, I'm at the place, like I, I told y'all a couple of weeks ago, I have wordless prayers now. I just be sitting going, hmm, hmm, <laughs> hmm. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what to say at 
certain things, at, at certain problems, at certain issues, at certain uh, places, at certain uh, visions that he's given. I mean, how are, you to, how are we supposed to do this? You know, and so sometimes we can be inundated with the pressures of the world. And sometimes we can be inundated with our own problems. Uh, I remember when I taught about the sacrifices and, and things like that, how it could be our own self-condemnation. That keep, I mean, I mean, I'm a person that I love hard. And, and when I feel pain from love, it, 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 it kicks me to the curb. I promise you, I love hard. And I'll be going, woo, how do I, what do I, how do I, how can I, you know? So, uh, there, like I said, I, I've had prayers recently where I'm just sitting there, uh, and my girlfriend from Michigan, we were talking, and she said, just moan. You know, I heard a preacher say, Jesus be moaning, be groaning. That can't even be uttered. Because, you know, he's interceding. And so, uh, I, I, I have to tell you, the weight of a church, the weight of a family, the weight of Oh, the weight of it. It ain't, it ain't, uh, it ain't that I'm incompetent. It's the weight of what we carry. And so it is necessary that we stay in prayer mode. Uh, I love this altar of incense because it is a thing that we should do perpetually and continually. But how many of you know that prayer is one of the least things that happens in the church house or in the body of Christ. Prayer like we need to. The scripture said the priests were to go in the morning and at night. So these incense he was lighting were accompanied with intercessory prayer for the Intercessory, the people bring their stuff. Priest goes in, he offers it up. Now, Christ is the high priest. We can go to God in prayer. And, and I'm so glad, like I said, everything is symbolic. This altar of incense represents prayer and, and, and how we pray and what we pray. The Bible said we pray the word of the best prayer we can pray is the word of God. The disciples asked Jesus, Master, teach us how to pray. And he said, Our Father, which I am, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. So it, 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 was, it, was, it was the word of God, or it was kingdom purposes that we pray. So I, I, I have been guilty of a God save us, God, this might be, oh God, I don't know what to do, God. Heavenly Father, and, and look, we got so that we sing them, and we've gotten so traditional that we got it all hooked up. That my bed could have been my cooling board, you know. You know, we we got we got prayer summed up as as just some 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 script, but the script that we need to be praying right now is is concerning the kingdom of God and what is to come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. We have to be careful that we pray the will of God. And that's what this altar of incense was. Because at that time, they, they didn't have what we have, like I said. But the, you, you needed to get to God for direction. We needed to get to God for provision. We needed to get to God for a covering. They were out in the wilderness. Anybody could have came in and just killed them. The only reason Pharaoh died is because it wasn't in the will of God. You see what I'm saying? So he was going after them, but he allowed them to die and them to live. Who would not pray <coughs> to that God for all that we need? And so uh, this altar of incense, the Lord required a special incense to be burned constantly at the altar of incense. 
It was a special sweet incense, a mixture of spices and oils and, and incense um, only to be used for the tabernacle. So God required this recipe. None other was to be burned. So he didn't accept just anything. You know, the, the, it, it kind of references where um, Aaron's sons before had offered up, they call it strange fire. Have you ever heard that terminology? He offered up strange fire. But whatever the offer, whatever they had that they had uh, concocted to give to God wasn't from a good heart. It wasn't from uh, a place of purity. It wasn't from uh, uh, a place where God would accept it. Just like Cain and Abel, the offering that he gave, uh, God didn't accept his his offering. And so uh, Aaron's son. Had did the, did the same thing when you when you bring something to God. So this is this is this is the note. This is the note. Whatever you bring to God, bring it in good conscience. Bring it in good spirit. And please bring it with a good heart. It do us better to not bring it at all. Mm. I, I remember a verse in the Bible where it says, "It is better to not." Make a box, then to good. make one and don't do it. Not mm -hmm. good. Not good. And you know what? The thing, like I said, self condemnation keeps us from God. If I don't have it, I'm not going to lie. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. And that way, you can be forthright with God and anybody else that asks you, what's up? Mm -hmm. Listen, I ain't got to lie about this. This is where I'm at. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather not give him some cheesy. 12 cent that I found in the bottom of my purse. Y'all better quit. Y'all what? Some, some, some loose change I found in my car that's in the cup holder with all this pop on it and they stuck together. Don't play with me. And so it's stuck together. I couldn't, I couldn't get two quarters car. loose. I couldn't get two quarters loose the other day to get back to the house. Because that spare change, it didn't mean nothing to me. Until I needed it. When I went forward, it was stuck together and it was mm -hmm. of no use. And then it was just spare change. Mm -hmm. And, and look, ooh, I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, God said, don't give me spare change. Mm -hmm. Give me your best. Because when, when Aaron boys offered up, whatever they offered, it was recognized as strange fire unto the Lord. So Absolutely. whatever goes up to God, has to have a sweet aroma. So we might as well learn how to come in and be real. See, that, that was the purpose of the process. That was the purpose of the process when you enter the gate and you get to the altar and you kill a thing and then you lay it on the altar and slaughter it and then you get to the world and then you wash your hands at the brazen labor and then you go through the, the gate and get to the holy place where you see the light and you can eat of the bread and take of his blood. You have the altar of incense right here. Where I'm just gonna praise now that I'm cleansed. I've 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 seen my reflection. Hmm. I've seen. I just left the labor. I've seen my reflection. And I found now it don't look good. I know we pretty ourselves up. I know we handsome ourselves up. I know we buy the right outfits. We come to church and we live our life and we, but there's something that you can't dress. And that is that heart. <laughs> you can't dress it up. It's there. Mm -hmm. And, and what, 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 what lies in the heart of a man literally comes out. Are y'all hearing me? And so if it's, if it's in the heart, it will surely show itself. It will truly show itself before all of this is over. So the purpose of me putting my guilt in that baptism, that water, of being real with myself and saying, God, my heart, I got, I got an issue. I got, a, I got an anger issue. Problems that led me there, but there's something in my heart that's 
not quite what we need. That keeps us in a mode of prayer where we can say, Lord, wash me, as David said. See, David, in the book of Psalms, is really, is, is really a lifeline, a lifetime book. It's a book of somebody's life, and they're telling you, I was in this place in my life, and I had to say, create in me, oh God, So that I might worship you. I can't, oh God, I can't worship you if my heart ain't pure. If, listen, I'm a realist. Hey, if something wrong with me, every last one of y'all know it. Y'all be like, uh-oh. Because my smile says I'm okay. But when you get that bent down, that, that, that emoji, and you'll say, what's wrong with her? When my heart is broke, or when my spirit is broke, I can't fake it. And so I'm the one that I'll back out. I'm just, I'm just sharing this with you all. This Bible class, but be, I'm so serious. Please interject. When my heart is broke, I back out. Because I'm so real that I can't be fake. I, I have to let things be. I'll let them walk. Hey, hey. It's what it is, it looks, but my heart is broke. And, and then, then I have to get to the place where I have to cleanse myself. I say, okay, okay God, this happened. What, what do I do? How do I, how do I recover? How, how, do I, how do I move forward? I, I, I mean, I, I can forgive, but I'm not necessarily forgiving. And so, I, I, I need this altar of incense here. I need, I need to send something up before you that you'll accept. Because I can't be fake. I can't just come before you any kind of way. And that is, that, that is something that, that we as believers, I, I will say Christian because I can stamp myself as a Christian. Just like people stamp themselves as a, as a, as a Baptist Christian or, 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 or whatever or a Mormon or you know, people stamp themselves as far as their religion is concerned. But when you are a believer, you are a follower okay. of Christ. And so uh, it's not hard when you understand what God went through to keep us close to him. So I'm going to start pitching my tent. In my, this is my spiritual tent. I'm going to start pitching my tent near God. Finding that place of refuge. Finding that place where I can, I can offer him up something clean and say, God, I made it this far. I gave, I gave what I gave. I washed my hands. Here we are at the altar of incense. It was a, it was a unique piece. It was designed for interaction with God. The, the, the altar of incense was a unique piece Designed for interaction, interaction with God. How do we interact with God? I know I, uh, Elder Q comes now on Wednesdays, and she just she prays. I I love that because ain't nobody telling her, ain't nobody announcing it, ain't nobody saying we're having prayer. So uh, we have to understand the urgency of getting into that presence of God. We have to understand that that this altar of incense represents prayers that go up to God. It was a unique, this, it was for unique design to interact with God. Prayer was sacred. Now, I, if I can get somebody to go to Exodus, the 30th chapter, it is the first through the 10th verse. I really want to get to the 10th verse. That's okay. I really want to get to the 10th verse, um, but prayer is sacred to God. I'm going to say it three times in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost for that sake. Prayer is sacred to God. Prayer is sacred to God. Prayer is sacred to God. And the reason we don't see some results like we want to is because we're not praying like we should. <laughs> we can throw some stuff out there. While I'm driving, I'm always, Lord Jesus, help us, Lord Jesus, oh God. And 
Sometimes I don't have nothing to say. Uh, I, I say, help, Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, like Jesus, Jesus wept one of them short ones. You, you, I, help, Lord. Because I, I, uh, uh, I, I sent some things atmospherically trying to come and attach itself to the body of Christ and to this church and cause division and cause uh, problems and cause non-peaceful uh, transitions and acts and, and stuff. I could see it. I could see it as clear as day uh, in my interaction with people. Uh, I could see the spirit of distraction that's settling itself. And, and, and I could see it coming in to the homes. And mm -hmm. I mean, it could be a misunderstood statement uh, mm -hmm. in your home. And, and, and I could say, uh, I want wheat bread. And, 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 and they could interpret it as, you know, mm -hmm. <coughs> I, I, when, I, when I tell you this thing gets deep, and the closer you get to God, the more revelatory your heart and spirit becomes, sorry. The more revelatory your heart and spirit will come, what becomes. When you get into the presence of God, he begins to say, now this. Or you'll have an unction. You'll have an unction to move, or an unction to do, or an unction to give. Or an unction. It gives you an unction. That's what the Spirit of God does. It gives you an unction. Not that there's an audible voice that say, uh, Verdana, go give Elder Q that ten dollars that's in your purse. It's not that it's gonna literally happen, sometimes it do. But there's an unction from God. When you get in the presence of God and it's the right pickup. <laughs> See, some things you can pick up and it can be negative. Yeah. Huh? You can pick up something and it can happen. What? We're picking it up. Wrong frequency. There's something wrong with the frequency. Maybe, maybe I haven't washed myself and saw myself. Y'all hear me. Maybe I don't see my reflection and, and, and then I say something or do something and it has the wrong frequency. And it don't go out sweet. is trying to tack itself to every church. Social media will, 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 will culturally and, 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 and will, uh, um, what they call it, uh, uh, it's a word they use it, uh, but, but it will kill you. Contaminate. Contaminate you. One blog, mm. one post, yes. one text, one call, one Comment can ruin a family. Tear it to pieces. And it is a spirit that is trying to attract itself to the body of Christ that caused separation and division. And because we're not praying, and because we're not washing our hands, and because we can't see our reflection, we'll accept anything. Working with the kids. Y'all talk if you need to. Working with the kids. I'm here eight hours with your baby. Mm -hmm. But I can't tell you there's something correct. You're running out the door to get to your priority. You better tell God. Mm -hmm. But I'm here with the thing that's going to grow up. That's going to become you or me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you or the world. Mm -hmm. You better tell them. Mm -hmm. Better tell them. Amen. And so even correction. Mm -hmm. People despise correction today. They do. Yes. Yes, they do. The thing that would save your life. I'll be dead and gone before some of the stuff I stole my kids. I'll be dead and gone before they realize mama was right. Mm -hmm. I will be in my grave, probably stoned six feet under further, but mm -hmm. some other body, mm -hmm. before my kids can say, Mama was right. Mama was right. Mm -hmm. Because I can offer a, a word of, of correction out of a good heart mm -hmm. and a good spirit and out of a good tone. Mm -hmm. I can sing it. And it's still, you said, <laughs> and so it's like when 
warning is not enough. And so I, I'm, I'm telling you guys, we have to encourage others to pray. God ain't looking at all that stuff. In today's time, we ain't got time to get it right. We just need to be falling on our face wherever we stand. Huh? You ain't got time. Some people, I hear, I hear people all the time. We've met some people, uh, they're supposed to be here Sunday. Uh, a lot of people say, I got to get myself together before I come. I started saying, people in church need to get together. You come get yourself together. I said, the people in church ain't together yet. That's why they coming. So you need to join the crowd so we can cut ourselves, get on the altar. Y'all better tell them. So when we come, we become the sacrifice. I can slip my own throat. And I'm not meaning that literally, because you got to be careful what you say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But spiritually, slit that, 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 that mm. carnal throat. Mm. Because in our humanity, we became carnal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. We were spiritual beings. Mm -hmm. Huh? And we still are. But we're having a human experience. Oh. Oh. And, and, and life here on earth ain't all that great. Mm. But, but, but what keeps us is the fact that I know God. Amen. Huh? That Amen. I, I have a Savior yeah. who, who died on the cross with me. And listen, we, I told y'all, we're going to be alone. It's not hard to preach the tabernacle because mm. it's all about Jesus. Mm. All about Jesus. Yes, sir. Every piece of furniture. There were seven main pieces. I can't wait to get to the mercy seat. But this altar of incense was required to be tended to and lit morning and twilight. Morning and twilight. Morning and twilight. Morning and evening. Morning I'm lightning. Praying. Evening I'm lightning. Praying. So when I wake up in the morning, I'm praying. And when I go to bed, I should be praying. But I think some of us think that's too much. Because I kept saying, oh, Lord, I ain't got that much to say. Moan mm -hmm. before him. Amen. Because he knows your heart. Mm -hmm. And he knows what to pick up from your tears. Yes, indeed. He knows what to pick up, Carl, from your sigh. I pray for the men, black men especially, because of the weight that's on their shoulders. I, 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 I pray for them. I can see it. The weight, the, how we easily uh, dismiss them if they do one thing wrong. What about the 99 right? Amen. And it's easy for the culture. It's called culture killing. Uh -huh. Cultural killing. But uh, uh, it's easy to dismiss people. It's easy to just write them off. Mm -hmm. The one thing I do, but you didn't count the 99 when I brought food to your house. When mm -hmm. I, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. when, I, when I took off my shirt and gave it to you, when I saw you were naked, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going deep because th th this is what happens. Mm -hmm. Because we love out of our hearts and we experience things and do things, mm -hmm. and then you can make a mistake and then mm -hmm. judgment comes. Not from God. Mm -hmm. Rejection. Yeah. Mm. Rejection comes, not, <laughs> not from God. Mm -mm. And I suffer, like most, from rejection. Mm. Yeah. I can't stand to be not spoken to. I can't stand to be, listen, I'm here. Mm -hmm. And when I'm present in your life, I'm 100%. You got the smile, you got the whatever I got. But when I'm rejected, I feel hopeless. And, 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 and us as the body of Christ, we don't even know how to. And see, people talk and frown on therapy, but you need to get somewhere and talk to somebody. If you ain't talking to God, you need to be talking to somebody. Because one day, that ticking bomb is going to go off. I have parents, they frustrate. I'm just being honest. They, they, they doing what they can, the best way they can, through the mindset of what they have established and not 
And so you suffer from not doing it right. And so they come in and you say, well, hey, we got this and that. And then your child, and they just go completely off because that one thing tilted mm -hmm. their day. And so we have to be careful that we stay in a prayerful mindset. Stay in a prayerful mindset. Stay in a place because prayer is sacred to God. This is where we really <coughs> hear from him. And I'm, I'm coming to my close. This is where we hear from him. Not necessarily talk to him. Mm -hmm. Come on. So we got to be in a place where we can hear. After we offer up our prayer, we have to sit long enough to say, God, what is you saying? Mm -hmm. Don't do it two or three days and say, he ain't speaking. Mm -hmm. Oh, God speaks. Mm -hmm. God speaks. He speaks to rocks. Mm -hmm. He speaks to people. He speaks to things. He speaks. I'm telling you, God speaks. Trust me, he speaks. When, when we come into the presence of God through prayer, it must be biblical. The priests work to intercede for Israel. Mm -hmm. That's what intercessory prayer is. Mm -hmm. We are to take something to God on behalf of somebody else. Mm -hmm. But he attended it both day and night. Mm -hmm. Remember, when God, when, when prayers rise, To God, He accepts it as a sweet smelling savor. Yes. So this is a reminder to the saints: <coughs> pray without ceasing, because it is most holy. Mm. We were going to read that scripture. Mm. It is most holy unto God. Mm. I'm gonna read it, and I'm going to close. It's Exodus 30. I was gonna do one through ten, but it tells you how to make it. But the tenth verse says. And Aaron shall make an atonement upon the horns of the altar once a year with the blood of sin offering of atonement. Once a year shall the atonement be upon and throughout the generations. For it is most holy unto God. The most holy thing that you can do as a believer is to pray. Which means, Lord, I'm counting on your counsel. I'm counting on your direction to take me where you need me to go because prayer is the most sacred and holy thing unto God. Remember your altar and your altar of incense. Remember that unto God because without God you can do nothing. So this concludes our night and we will be moving on Thank you all for tuning in on Facebook and YouTube. Those of you that sacrificed and came out tonight, remember, prayer changes things. Yeah. Pray yes. without ceasing. And make it a, 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 a fact that we pray both days.